All right. Welcome back to the third video. This is Michael KE4EST on this RCA WO33 Alpha. I have a little schematic here. Like I said in the first video, Mr. Carlson goes through this really, really good. So, no sense in reinventing the wheel, but we one thing we can see here maybe. I print this off on one page. It's supposed to be like you know bigger. Maybe we can see that. Yeah, you can see that it shows voltages here, like the six x four. And you can see that three hundred fifty five volts is supposed to be coming off of there. The six c four here going up here to the grid of this CRT here. It's supposed to be negative 680 volts or thereabouts. And that's the main two voltages we want to look at right now. And we've got uh, 220 volts on the deflector plates up here on the CRT. But the main thing, and here's another one, negative, is that negative 50? Oh, negative 500. Negative 50, that <laughs> didn't sound right. Here and all that, but... And they're showing 117 volts AC. My line voltage is 121 point something, 122. So it could be a little bit higher than what they're showing here. I think I've got it though set around 120. So this will be amplified a lot. Um, even three volts difference here. Now this being 117, me setting on 120. You know this have a voltage it will probably show like in the 360s or something uh, for this and this negative 680 might be negative uh, 685 well let's see maybe a little bit higher than that but anyway so let's um, zoom out the camera how am I gonna do this let's see let me make sure that's turned off. Okay. Okay, I've moved the camera a little bit. You can see that. And then yeah, I wanted to use the analog meter up there, the Heath Kit vacuum tube voltmeter. But I ain't gonna set two cameras right now, so let's just see if you can see this. Yeah, I think you can see that good enough. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is take the negative and put an alligator clip on it, set it over here, I'm not touching anything. Get me a grid ground here. All right, very carefully turn this back on over there, and I'll go ahead and turn the unit back on. Let it start warming up, and I can't stress enough, cannot stress enough when you're doing this, especially right now. There's a lot of high voltages in here, like you've seen, 350 some volts, 680 volts. Be, be extremely, extremely careful doing this. Use one hand. Don't be getting both hands up in there. You know, in case you slip or something. And if you don't feel comfortable doing this, don't do it. Get somebody else to do it or just don't do it. You know, stick with the low voltage stuff. Because this can really zap you really good and even kill you. So be very, 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 very careful doing this stuff, okay? All right, so... This down here is our 6x4, and down here we got our little burnt spot here. I don't know if you can see with that line cord, but this is where we should, this uh, come off the cathode here, these should have about 350 volts, 355, I think it said 355, and 365. Well, I got that right. And then, up here, Let's see. 
is that CRT negative 680 on pin 2, which is a grid. So let's go here. And you see what I see? Positive 83 volts. That should be negative 680 or thereabouts. That's definitely not right. So, you can't see that. Like, this is one of the. Wow, that still didn't work. Do this. I'm trying to be very careful here. 212 volts. It's one of the deflectors there. It's set about 220, but we've got another voltage problem here on the grid, so that's going to throw things off. Voltage is way off, and it's in the positive. So, hmm, I wonder what that could be. So, well, I've got a pretty good idea. I've got a pretty good idea. Let me move this over here. reach well turn this off okay turn this over here let me pull out yeah all right this is the 6c5 or 6c4 let's go back look at this real quick this here's the 6c4 that's pulled out and this right here, that 0.5 microfarad capacitor, that's the 1,000 volt capacitor. And I've got that. Yep, here it is. That was that one that was in the cross in here that I took out. 1,000 volts. That's that one. So, and that is going to the plate there. You see that of this 6C4. So I pulled the 6C4 out, and I can already tell right now. As I suspected, that little arcing there, which is good that you've seen that, you know, you got to really pay attention. Anybody can make a mistake, accidentally cause something to short out there, and you're, you know, redoing something or whatever. But I don't think that's a problem. It could have caused something else in the 6X4. So let's look at this 6C4 here. First of all, let me zoom in a little bit. What do you see there? See that up top there? Okay, that might be some dust. No. A little bit of dust, but you see them black marks? That shouldn't be there. I don't know if you can see it. That plate in there. Should be a nice gray color. It's got, let me move it around. It has got in the center of it in there this thing's focusing wrong here a lot of stress has happened to this thing and another thing here try to use this as a background so it will focus on this you see this you can see that in camera look at the base of that tube okay you see how this is bubbled out here. This tube has gotten so hot. And if, I'm trying to hold it really straight here. But it's actually crooked a little bit that way. This tube has gotten so hot, well, drawn so much current that it's caused the tube, the glass, to actually get hot and start to melt. And that is probably from it being... Um, plugged in sitting there for a while plugged in on the bench or on you know on the table there and the guy's trying to sell it you know so that's what's going on there so my suspect is I've not tested it yet but this capacitor here is probably went so leaky that's probably the reason it's spewing stuff out this little hole right here you know, actually spewing out physical stuff, but it's 
probably so electrically leaky that I don't even have to put this on a tester. Let me zoom out here. Bring this down like this. Let's move this to move this to here. Okay. And put this meter on ohms here. Get it where you can see it. I'm going to guess that this is going to be around a mega ohm or less or something like that. Look at that. Look at that. And it's going to climb up as it tries to charge the capacitor. Because it'll still, you know, act as a capacitor to a certain point. Um, put that over there somewhere. But this has went so leaky that it's destroyed that tube. And it could have destroyed something else in the circuit. I hope not. But this is why I talk about replacing these capacitors. Especially in something like, you know, test equipment and something like that, you know. Something like this. Something, you know, you, you want to be reliable. Especially something in a power supply. You know, you might get away with a little bit, you know, little leaky tubes or little leaky capacitors. It's a little bit leaky, you know, in interstage coupling or something for an amplifier or whatever, but something like this that thing has shorted so bad that it melted the tube so that's really interesting okay let me just this back to where it was at here let me see if I can do this and keep the camera running look I think yeah yeah I've got a 6c4 here that's uh, it's not a brand new one and I'm not even sure what the brand name is of it I have in a box but I've got another 6c4 here so let me move my light here a minute for myself Maybe. Let's do that. Okay. Let's put in a different 6C4 now that all this has been changed out. And put this back here. Put the meter back on voltage. DC voltage this back you can see it Turn this back on now we can have some other issues you know you gotta be careful think well I got it now still be careful you know watch doing it wear safety glasses whatever because if this works we're gonna throw a lot of voltage up here okay something else that's bad can start arcing or explode in your face or you know, whatever, and we're going to have a whole lot of voltage here, so be very, very, very careful, okay? So, okay. I turned it on. All right. Tubes are lighting up. Okay. Let's check some voltages now. Back on, make sure the meter's set right here. That one. There's our 360 something volts. Now, very carefully. This should be negative 600 and some odd volts here. Negative 656, do you see that? All right, oh. And I can see what you can't see. Okay, I see a trace. So let's move that. Let's move this. Let's take this off. Okay, for safety, I'm going to turn this. 
off. Wait, carefully and turn that off. I still could have some charged up caps here. I'm going to bring this around. Very, very carefully here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and turn my power supply back on back there. Um, okay. Move this a little bit, maybe bring it down. Maybe back this up just a bit. Okay. Turn that meter off. Okay, let's move this. Let's turn it on. Let it start warming up. Intensity. And look at that. We got a trace. See that? So we are getting somewhere now. It's jumping all around, probably. Yeah, there we go. I'm getting in your way here. That's a nice, pretty line, too. Pretty straight. May need to rotate the CRT just a bit. But look at that. We are getting a trace. Here we get way down here. 0.02. Picking up stray noise. See, I'm putting my finger next to the vertical input. So we know that's working. on positions working vertical positions working that's not bad can't really tell see now that we can see the horizontal gain yeah it's working can't much tell anything about this vertical cow or vertical position right this yeah but that's definitely working there oh yeah yeah, let's feed a signal into it. All right. Let me set my signal generator. Um, about one k, one kilohertz. Oh yeah. Okay. Let's see if we can make it pretty. There we go. There we go. Get that. Wow. Look at that. That's good news. Hold on. Where are you at? Come on. There you are. Is that sine wave there? Okay. Let's back back off of it here. Not bad. Now we can see our vertical gain is working. I don't know if you can see it. Man, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, I think you can. Look at this. You see there, right across there. I think, well, that looks really bright on camera, don't it? I should back that off a little bit. Um, see, to me, when I've got it turned like this, it's pretty dim. But the camper, the camera really sees that really good and makes it really bright. I definitely think I'm going to get rid of this piece of plastic here. It's half wore out. Wore out. No, ain't gonna really. Use, I'm not gonna really use that. But anyway, look across the center here. Where's my? Where did my pointer go? I turned my light down. I can't see. 
Where is my pointer? Well, I'll use a different one. This is about the way. Okay. Look right across here. You see that dark line through there? Let me see. And you see how it stays no matter where I move this? And that's what that is. That's where somebody has left it like this. The intensity all the way up. I let it sit there for hours and days and whatever when they're not using it. And it has actually got burn in. Put the signal back in. You can really see it there. Yeah, that shows up on camera good. Um, you can really see that. Yeah, I thought I could stretch it out a little more, but it's going to go crazy on me here. Um, I do that, it just goes too crazy. But anyway, well, that's interesting. You can really see that now, can't you? Look at this. Hope they don't drive you crazy with that moving, but see that line? That's what that is. So, I mean, it'll still work. I mean, you can still see when we take, you know, it's still bright. Um, if you can see, look at that. See how bright that is? Let me go real slow. Dim, right? Right in there. Dims out. Right there. Watch that closely. See how it's kind of dimming? Bright. This is kind of making it harder to see. See that dimming out right there? It's still there. It'll still work. Um, so I'll still work for my purpose. Turn this thing into a curve tracer, but or a signature tracer. But yeah, I'll probably be on the lookout for a, another one of these. CRTs to put in here, maybe that has low time on it, or new in the box, or something old stock. But anyway, got it working. She's a working, and thanks for uh, hanging in there and going along for the ride with me here. It's taken three videos, <laughs> but this is just what I'm calling bits and pieces. Maybe I'll change it to odds and ends. I don't know, but, you know, I didn't start off with, bam, here is a WO33A. We're going to go through it and look at it, and then, bam, on the next, you know, halfway through the video or in another video, look, it's restored, and here's what I've done to it, and look, it's working. You know, because usually I do all this stuff, you know, not on camera. Oh crap, something ain't working. Oh, there's a little smoker. Oh, okay, let's see what's going on here. Oh, gotta change the tube. Oh, gotta change this. To get it, you know, I'll get it here before, you know, start the camera back up. So you went along with, you know, follow me along, and you see how it wasn't that bad. Some things can be really, really bad. You can spend hours troubleshooting, pulling your hair out, and going through it, but it really don't have to be that bad if you just follow the schematic. Follow it thing by thing start from the power supply is the main thing usually on stuff like this check your voltages especially if they you know it's really great some of them don't but most schematics have voltages on it and if the ones that don't you know you kind of get a feel for you know what about what it should be you know and like 6x4 that's about 350 volts is about normal you know 250 to 350 if it had been showing no voltage or like 20 volts or 80 volts and I knew something was wrong right so anyway like i said don't forget to put comments down below if you like these videos these little off shoots odds and ends bits and pieces videos um where it's not the full thing so you'll probably be seeing this thing more in the future i'm gonna clean it up clean everything up good put the electronics inside of it you know and get it going so i can use it for a signature tracer and it'll be nice small compact and it's modern enough where it's easier to you know uh, get parts for the other one you know that I showed in a few videos back where I restored that old one that was a school oscilloscope whatever 
I did put electronics in it, but it turned out I just didn't like it. The CRT in it, I had got the number wrong to start with. Once I pulled it out and looked at it, I cannot find nobody anywhere, no matter where I've tried to find a replacement. And it has got some burning issues and then different things I just couldn't. And it was kind of awkward and kind of weird. So I was like, you know, I'm going to keep looking. Uh, I did that little small, what, a year or two back. That little small oscilloscope, compact little bitty, solid state oscilloscope that I'd done too. But And it's fine. It worked great. But it just wasn't tube. If you know, you know, I've mentioned before, I just, ever since I've been a teenager, I just, just something about it. It's got the tubes in it. It's older. Make it work. Repurpose it. Use it, you know. Um, so, anyway, thanks for following along here and setting along through all this. And hope you enjoyed it. You know, like I said, leave your comments down below. Get down there, you know, hit the like button. <laughs> subscribe if you're not subscribed but say hey yeah I like seeing these outtake videos of you working on something or nah it's boring just do what you've been doing or whatever so anyway until the next video this is Michael KE4EST send me three everybody